my name is Mary Helen Higgs and this is my Theater History 2 final um, and as the intro gave you a little taste of it. I think that Madame Vestris is the Wonder Woman of theater production and management. Um, to kind of kick us off, I want you to think about someone that you know who just knew that things needed to be different. Maybe a situation hit some bumps in the road and this person said, this needs to be done to make this happen and I'm gonna fix it. And they snapped their fingers and it happened. Um, for me, Reading about Madame Vestris, I happen to kind of think that of her. Um, I think that she is one of the original ladies in history to see a problem and then find the solution right off the bat. And the number one reason why she is Wonder Woman is because of this. Uh, Madame Vestris was born right before the turn of the 19th century and grew up as an actress, a singer, and also experienced some of the technical aspects of theater. So I think that she would fit pretty well into our BA program here at Georgia College if you're getting my drift there. Um, but according to Brockett, Vestris was one of the first to coordinate all aspects of production together. So before this point, there were stage managers, but they weren't kind of the traditional stage manager that we think of today. Today, the stage manager sits at the, at the top of a production meeting and says, hey, costumes, what you got, and set, what you have, and props, where you going? Director, is this all clicking with what you're thinking as well? And Vestris was one of the first to say, all right, people, this play needs to be co cohesive, so I'm going to make sure that that happens. Um, so, yes, there were stage managers before her, but she was the one who kind of kicked her tail into high gear and made it happen. So... Um, she had spent her entire life in the theater watching others work independently of each other, but decided that somehow they all needed to be brought together. Essentially enters the world's first kick-butt stage manager. Not only did she practically become the world's first stage manager, but she also spent a great deal making sure that the design elements came together seamlessly, introducing the first box set, or all-inclusive set, in England. This meant that the set literally had three walls, a ceiling, and the only thing that was missing was a front wall, so you were just looking into someone's, into someone's living room there. So that was pretty cool. When I say that Vestris had spent her entire life in the theater, I mean just that. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, Vestris had her acting debut in the Il Rato di Prosperiana. I apologize, I took French and not Italian. In 1815 was her debut, though. She was just 18 when she landed the role. From age 18, Vestris would appear in over 20 shows around Europe until about 1866. An incredible career, for sure. Possibly explaining by her mother being an accomplished musician, Josephine Bartolisi. She was German, um, and her mother raised her as a single mother. So I think that's really pretty inspiring for uh, Vestris to continue on in that fashion as well. According to American Women Stage Directors of the 20th Century, Vestris was not content with the success of that acting career that was still pretty incredible. She always insisted on moving onward and upward. Vestris was ahead of her time in many ways. According to the ELTA project, theater was morally questionable in the 19th century. Who would know why? But anyway, it was. So women who stepped foot in theaters because not only was it morally questionable, but anything that was morally questionable was questionable for women to do. Oh look, the history may or may not have moved on since that point, but that's neither here nor there. So anyway, Vestris is participating in theater activities and women who stepped foot into the theater in that back in that day were frowned upon discouraged and oftentimes passed away from society but Vestris said yeah whatever I'm not gonna buy into that mumbo jumbo and I'm just gonna continue on my happy little way so she continued to move on in her career in the middle of that acting career which I mentioned earlier she wasn't content staying where she was she um, was called upon to manage the Olympic Theater in, in England, which was pretty incredible for the time for a woman to be able to manage a theater. Um, according to the second Britannical article, that's what that says, her fame skyrocketed after this venture due to the fact that she regularly hosted burlesque and extravaganza shows while managing. Um, she also ensured that the show would remain artistically intact from night to night, according to American women stage directors of the 20th century again. Um, Vestris would go on to manage at Covenant Gardens in London after this, according to Armstrong Play's blog. Now with this, she was one of the first to, um, in, not one of the first, but she was one of 
the um, designers of the time that insisted that everything had to be historically act accurate. But with that, she also wanted to make sure that the person who came to see the set show on Monday would see the same show on Friday as well. So she not only um, insisted on historical continuity, but also on continuity from show from night to night and week to week and month to month, um, just to make sure that everyone who came to see the show was going to see the same one. But anyway, Vestris goes on to manage Covenant Gardens in London, according to Armstrong Plays blog. Vestris' managing debut at Covenant began with Love Labor's Lost by Shakespeare. Vestris, get this, was even playing Rosaline in that production. So not only was she an actress and then moved on to production and moved on to management, but she also managed and acted and designed all three at the same time. I think that's pretty incredible. I, I tried it on my study abroad trip and I'm not 100% sure how well that worked out doing all three jobs at once. So she's, she's pretty amazing in, the, in this aspect. Unfortunately, Charles Kemble, who sold the uh, Gov Covenant Gardens to Vestris, said, Hey, lady, I want my theater back, but didn't ask that nicely. He just kind of kicked her to the curb, and she and her husband at the time were forced to kind of live meal by meal and weren't really sure how ends were going to meet. So, um, according to the same, same Armstrong blog, um, Vestris thought that this was going to be a devastating move. So she began a, quote, farewell tour. Well, this farewell tour landed her at the Lyceum Theater, where she would continue to um, have her productions uh, produced and the extravaganzas and the burlesque, and she could be in them, she could manage them, she could design them, and all until her death in 1856. Um, so she was not in a, a, someone who would quit very easily, and I really admire her for that. Like I said earlier, while many women did manage in England, not many had such a lasting impact such as Vestris did. Um, she was the catalyst for many traditions that we have today. She, according to LOSTR books, was one of the first to kind of bring Shakespeare back up to the front, front lines um, and began to began to produce his plays again and not many people really responded well to that but i think the success that we have today with shakespeare is in large part due to the fact that she said i'm not going to quit producing him he's a great playwright and i'm going to continue with it and you guys are just going to have to suck it up and deal with it kind of thing um but she is responsible for many traditions so one of those being us actually still continuing on with shakespeare because she admired him and put on his plays even though maybe audience numbers didn't fill the seats but she really believed in the cause and that's what she fought for and and produced after um also other traditions she was one of the first to seek the interest of the performer over the interest of the profit of the company and so she kind of did away with the donor nights and not that those are bad things but you do want to make sure that your cast is taken care of so they can put on a good show and she was one of the first to realize that hey i gotta take care of my actors before i just force them on onto stage three times a day without a break that kind of thing she also only offered complimentary tickets to the press, which is something we're seeing nowadays. Um, and yes, our families are going to get comp tickets while we're at a college show, but typically only pro press get those, and that's in large part due to her because she believed that if you were just giving complimentary tickets to everyone, then everyone could get in the theater. And yes, theater should be for everyone, but she also thought it was kind of a, a sanctified place, and she wanted to keep that level of sanctification, and so she only distributed complimentary tickets to the press, which was pretty pretty neat. And um, in a, kind of in conjunction with that, she made the green room more of a VIP space, and that was due to the again that the theater was just so lax of letting anyone in, and everyone could get in for free, and the people who got in for free didn't appreciate it as much as the people who paid, and that's what best just believed. And so those who accessed the green room were like high society, high class, like we should really respect these people because they're in our green room type thing. Um, I personally look up to her for her ability to see the problem and instantly provide a solution, whether it be not quitting when her love labor's lost was essentially just a bankrupt show and saying, oh, well, I'm going to do a farewell tour and then still having probably 10 more years left on her career and and also being one of the first to say that, hey, we really should probably should have one contact person for everyone on the production team to look at and not even to control everyone, but just to make sure that everyone's on the same page and everyone is being heard and everyone has a say in 
what the um, the me- maybe the metaphor, the message of the show is trying to get across. Um, I also think that it's empowers- empowering that Vestris is a woman. She was Madame Vestris um, and chose not to stay close to gender roles of the time. And women rule, and I'm glad she took it and ran with it. So, without further ado, I give you Madame Vestris, the Wonder Woman of production and theater management of the 1800s, 1900s, well, she didn't live in the 1900s, mainly the 1800s. Um, but I am going to continue working on my woman, uh, Wonder Woman-ness, all inspired by Madame Vestris. Thank you so much for watching.